All right, so we already have the question superclass, so we're going to create a subclass for fill in question. So go ahead and click on the new class button, and we're going to call our new class fill in question. And we'll open that up. And we'll just get a little bit of this started for now, and we'll continue it tomorrow. Um, eventually, we're going to need to use a scanner object to help us with the fill-in question. So let's import that now so we don't have to worry about that later. So import java.util.scanner. And then we're going to write a, a more complete description here that explains, well, what exactly is a fill-in question class? How does it behave? So a fill-in question is constructed with a string that contains the answer surrounded by the underscore character. Let's, be, let's provide an example to be more specific. Like, what does that look like? For example, so here's an example question. The inventor of Java is, we do an underscore to show that we, this is where the blank is going to be. And the answer is James Goss, Gosling. James Gosling. And then we have another underscore to delineate where the end of the blank is going to be in the fill in question. And then we continue with the question. So I just did a period and the close quote. When we specify this as the question text, what we expect is that the question should be displayed as the inventor of Java is a blank and then the period. And then the answer for that question has been extracted and we know is James Gosling. So that's the behavior we want for this class. And this behavior is not the same as that of the superclass of the question class, which is why we need to actually write our subclass. So I'm going to update this with my GitHub username. I'll put in today's date. And the new keyword that we're going to learn today, this is going to be like the last thing we do here, the new keyword we're going to learn today is how to specify that one class is a subclass of another class. So we're going to say the fill in question class extends, and I love that word extends because it builds on the behavior of. And by extends, I mean is a subclass of the question class. And literally, the way we specify this in Java is in our class header right here, we say public class fill in question extends question. And extends shows up in red because it's a Java reserved word. And that's how we specify that fill in question is a subclass of question. And what's kind of neat is when you compile this code, if you switch back to your BlueJ project window, you'll now see that there is an inheritance specified in the diagram as well, and that fill-in question is a question. We see that inheritance represented um, by that other arrow. So, All right, we're going to pause there, commit that, um, push it, and then we'll pick this up tomorrow. Yesterday, we started to create our first ever subclass. Um, and so as a reminder, there was already a superclass, which was called question. And the question superclass was for like a generic question. There's some question text. There's the answer to the question. It had a couple constructors, mutator methods, a check answer method, a two string method. Um, and this class is just fine for certain types of questions. But we wanted a specialized question. We wanted a question that would be like a fill in the blank question, where when we make a new question, we could specify a string like this, where the answer is embedded in the question itself. And we'd extract that answer and replace it with underscores, because we wouldn't want to show the student the answer. Um, and we called that a fill in question. And so one of the things we did yesterday is we focused on the extends keyword. This is how we tell Java that the fill-in question extends the behavior of the question class. And the terminology we use for that is we say the fill-in question is a subclass 
of the question class. Okay. Um, and that's about as far as we, as we got yesterday. What I want to focus on today um, is, is building on more of this. So I'm going to actually delete the rest of the template code. And what I want to put, <coughs> sorry, what I want to put in here next um, is actually a really important comment block that's going to describe, that's, I think this is the most important comment block in this class, and it's going to describe the code that we're not going to write. Okay? Because when we say fill in question extends question, when fill in question is a subclass of question, fill in question inherits all of the instance variables, like text and answer, and the methods of its superclass. So what we don't want to do is declare those methods again, and that's the most common pitfall I see students run into. So we're going to write a comment here to remind us, so when we look back at this class, we're like, oh yeah, don't do that. Do not declare instance variables for text and answer. The text and answer instance variables are inherited inherited from the question class. If you forget this advice and you do declare text and answer as instance variables, Java is going to have no problem with that. It'll be like, fine, you now have two instance variables both called text. Which one is accessed when um, is going to be a mess and things aren't going to work, and it's going to be really confusing. So remember that you inherit not only the methods, you inherit the instance variables, so don't, don't duplicate those. Now, might a subclass need new instance variables? <clears throat> sure, that's fine. You can add new instance variables, but don't redeclare ones that you're already inheriting. All right, so that's an important comment about what we're not writing. Usually when we're writing a new class, we start off by writing the class's constructor, and we're going to do the same thing here. So let's start by writing the constructor for this class. Um, so we'll do some javadoc stuff like we usually do to explain how this constructor works. So slash star star enter. The constructor, oops. The constructor constructs, sorry, constructs a fill in question object with the specified text that contains the answer. It's going to be very similar to the question classes constructor that takes a single parameter which is the question te text. So we have one parameter called question. It is the specified question text with the embedded answer. That's like that, that's that new behavior we want. Writing a constructor for a subclass in terms of the constructor header is exactly the same as for all the classes we've been writing all year long. We still say public, we still put the class name as the name of the constructor, it has to be that, and we still put whatever parameters we may want for our constructor if it's not a default constructor. Here's the new thing, though. The superclass has instance variables. They need to be initialized. The subclass may depend upon those instance variables being initialized, either directly or indirectly. And so it's really important, and in fact required, that before we do anything in the subclass constructor, we make sure the superclass constructor runs. And if the superclass itself has a superclass, it needs to make sure that its superclass runs. So basically, whichever class is at the top of this inheritance hierarchy, its constructor needs to run first, and then its subclass constructor, and then that subclass's con uh, subclass constructor, and so on and so forth. And so the way we do that is we use a new reserved word called super. And in the parentheses, we pass whatever arguments we need to make sure we call the right version 
of the superclass's constructor. And in this case, our superclass had two constructors, the default constructor with no parameters, and a constructor that takes a single argument, which is a string. And that's the one we want to call because we want to make sure we actually set the question text. So here's a new keyword, new reserved word we haven't used before. Super is the way we say call the superclasses constructor. So my advice is that in general, we should always explicitly call the question, in this case, the questions, the question classes constructor. Um, and we want the one that takes the string parameter. We don't want the default one. Calling a super classes constructor must be the first line of code in the subclasses constructor. And I kind of explained why that is conceptually. Um, but that is that this is going to be enforced by the compiler. If I try to do anything here, like another declare even a variable and initialize it, I get an error that says no. Call to super must be first. Okay, so the compiler will help us remember this. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Let's delete that. So I said that in general, we should always call the superclasses constructor explicitly and do it first. Well, what if we don't? Well, if we don't explicitly call a superclasses constructor, Java will automatically call the superclasses default. And by just to remind everyone, default means there are no parameters. Constructor. Even if that would be OK, I still think you should explicitly call the superclass as constructor. Um, it's a nice way to communicate to others reading your code that the decision to call the default constructor was, was a conscious one. But if we don't leave out this super call, it's going to do it anyway. It's going to call the superclass's default constructor. And that may not be the behavior we'd want. In this case, it definitely wouldn't be the behavior we want. Because if we look at the question class, the default constructor doesn't do anything. So we would be doing nothing with our um, the, the question text that we need to save. The, this constructor takes that question text and passes it along to a mutator method called setText. Um, and if we look at, look at the setText method, we can see that all this does is assign the reference to the string to the instance variable. But this isn't really the behavior we want. So what we're going to focus on on Monday when we come back is how do we override the set text method? How do we change this behavior such that we can extract the answer from the question text um, and not store the embedded answer within the text? So that'll be the topic for Monday. We'll work on overriding the set text method. But we've only got a minute left, so go ahead and commit and push your changes, and we'll continue this after the weekend.